there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. I'm here today with Eric and his buddy Steve from American Hoist who've come and installed our big rotary lift in the vehicular sciences lab. So let's go through the process of what people can expect when they hire you guys and you know, cause you guys sell these. Yes. And when people buy them, you come and install them. Correct. And it's important for people to know what to expect and, and why they want to buy it from you and why they want to hire you instead of trying to do it themselves. Because this is, you're, you're putting a car over your head. Yes. So yeah. It <laughs> you're right. You put a car over your head, uh, you, you'd want a professional to do it to know some of uh, the requirements as far as depth. Yeah, the offsets uh, and... Concrete requirements, ceiling requirements, and uh, most lifts have, you know, different settings that they can be adjusted yeah, to. Yeah, like this has the, the offset, the asymmetrical setup. Asymmetric, symmetric, uh, different height settings, different, you could set it for diff different widths if you want, if you know how. Um, some other things, you, concrete thickness is a big thing. A lot of guys think, well, they lay, lay down a two by four and think they have enough concrete. Well, that's, <laughs> they call it four, but that's your two by four is three and a half inches. Yeah. So you're not quite there. So. so what is the process for getting one of these installed? Let's take people through it like soup to nuts, the whole thing, because we've got it installed now, yep. but how did we get to here? Let's go through the whole process and show them how that worked. Well. After you call us, we show up with a, we'll have one of these lifts get it up on our trailer. We'll okay. un unband it. Uh, the first couple of things that we will do is we'll assemble the overhead on our trailer and we'll put the extensions on our trailer. And then once we have those things, you can do them up, up there, but it's a lot easier on the trailer. Okay. Uh, we'll stand it up in here after we have taken our measurements off the wall. Yep, you, you came in, you took the measurements. Yep, we took you the measurements. You got all the chalk lines laid out and figured out where the center line is and the offsets for the wall Correct. and all that. And you know, it was, we did all that before we even started with the trailer. Right. And then we unloaded off the trailer with a forklift, right. brought it in here, and then it was getting everything positioned and standing them up. Right. And then you guys had to do, you had to lace everything up with a cable and all that jazz. Yep. And there's, there's a whole process to it. So let's, let's talk about that. Like after we got them stood up, what was the next step after they went after into After we position? had them stood up and we have, on, the, on this lift, we're fortunate enough to have cuts in the bottom of the base plate to square one side up to the other. Yeah, I saw there were uh, notches in them. Right, so we'll square those up, double, triple check your measurements. Um, drill just one side initially. Okay. You get your anchor. You typically would like to put like two anchor bolts in so it doesn't move around on us. So we'll put two anchor bolts in, drill the rest of the holes. Okay. Put the rest of the anchor bolts in and level that side. And the, the reason being, we'll level that side and then come over here and check this one. Even though we, we think we have the right measurement in the book, we want to check our measurement here and we want to put our top on and make sure that our top will fit. And make sure that as designed matches as built. Exactly. Now you talk about leveling it. This is bolted to the floor. How, how do you level it? It isn't level there, just being on the floor? No, no. Uh, concrete workers are generally pretty close. Okay. But they're still going to be... Not close lot. enough for putting a car over your head. Right. <laughs> yeah. And typically, you know, most floors will have some slope to a drain. Okay. So you have to account for that. So we'll put some horseshoe shims under which side? Plastic horseshoe shims under the anchor bolts that need... Slowly. And that, that just... Because it's all compression, so it can be just a piece of plastic. Yeah. And that, yep. that offsets it a little bit to get them perfectly level. Exactly. Okay. And uh, after we have the overhead on, we've checked. Sometimes we'll, we'll put our bolts in loose up here, and then we'll check our, our level on this one. Okay. Because even though the top fits, if this isn't level, we don't want to drill it yet. Yeah. So we'll make sure this is close to level and on our lines. So we're level and square, and we're level and square over here. So everything has to work. Okay. So we're square all the way through. And so then, then you we'll get your shims one. in for that side. Yep. We'll shim it, drill it. And then we can tighten both of them. Okay, so then you've got a rigid base to build off exactly. of and then you tighten everything up top. Exactly. Okay. What are proper things people should know? You know okay, you've got your new lift. Yep. and it's installed and everything's cool, what do we need to know as new owners of a beautiful new rotary lift? Rotary, not much. Um, there are no lubrication points. There, uh, the equalizer cables, it's a good thing to know that if, if you're lifting 
a couple vehicles and you notice that one side to the other is off. Maybe the passenger side is ahead. Oh, like um, the, the safety locks? Yep, you okay. can hear them. You can hear the locks actually clicking in to set the lift on the locks without any weight on it to adjust it. Okay. You don't ever want to adjust it loaded because the vehicles change from one to the next. So uh, adjusting the locks on the first lock is usually the best way without a car on it and then test it. Um, another thing to look for. Now, how do we adjust it on the locks? Because right now it's unloaded. So let's show people that real quick. Okay. You want me to take it up to the locks? Yeah. Okay. So we take it up and you'll hear the safety locks engage, the ka -chunk sound. Those Correct. are the, the safety locks. Correct. And the first one's at about, what, two foot off the floor, I think? Yes. Uh, first one's 20. up a ways, and then, then they're pretty regular. There's our locks. There's your locks. And I heard it on both sides. Yep. So now I want to... I, I I don't pull out the lock release lever over here. I just, right. I just do this one, and I set it down on the locks. Yep, just the lowering valve. And then it stops moving, and we're there. Yep. So now we're sitting on the first set of safety locks. Yep. Okay. And it's kind of hard to show it now because they're right on, but say this, this side we're lagging. Okay. You would tighten this cable, the okay. top cable here. And if ever you were to run out of adjustment here, there's adjustment at the other end. So you'd have to say. Okay, so you loosen that to about half and then tighten the other one. Well, you there. wouldn't be able to get at it, but to tighten the cable, just tighten here okay. to bring this side up until you run out of adjustment. When you okay. run out of adjustment, then you have to pull this cable all the way off. That's when we call you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and push it up through there. Call, call a professional. There you go. Okay. Um, now, when lifting a car, let's cover some basic operation basics. Okay. Um, when lifting a car, I had been taught that the proper way to do it is you lift the car up like that, and when you've got the car as high as you want, you come back down and set the car on the locks. Just like that. Correct. And that's how you live. The, car, the, the weight of the car is actually held by the safety locks, not the hydraulic system. Exactly. And then when you want to put the car down, you bring it up a little bit, just a few inches off the locks, yep. and then pull your release lever. Correct. And then the lowering valve, and set it back down. That's it. And that is the right way to do it. That is. Okay. Um, how do we use the plate on the floor? The plate on the floor varies between different vehicles. Obviously, you're going to have your, your two-door coupes, some of your four-door sedans, okay. ex, you know, regular cab trucks, okay. and then you get into your crew cabs. So it's actually a three-position yep. dish. You start with, for small cars like my Honda, yep. we'd put the tire here just before the first nub. So you drive until you feel the first nub. Correct. For average, typical cars, you put it in between the two. You just right. drive right up onto it. Right. For big trucks, yep. come over the, over the second one, and you put the wheel right here. And that shifts the center of gravity of the vehicle. You're exactly. adjusting to the overall length of the vehicle. Exactly. And say, even if you have, you have to think about what's in the back of, say, a truck, too. Okay. Because this is, this is a non-loaded truck. Yeah. Is what we're talking about here. If you get a, a plumber's truck that has a whole bunch of fittings and everything on the back, we have to move that farther forward yet. Okay. Because I have had some where guys get them too far to the back and... If, if you have all that weight hanging off the back, what it's going to do to this carriage right here is tip it. Okay. It's going to pull it too far one way or the other, and it's going to bind. And that lift, and it'll get all locked that lift up won't and come down. Okay. So. <laughs> and then you're stuck with a plumber's truck in the air. Exactly. Now, so. the exact details as to where to put the tire in relation to thing changes hoist to hoist. It varies by model. Yes. But you can find detailed numbers on the sticker on the side of the hoist. All the specifications and the, the, the fundamental safety instructions are in your manual, and they're on the side of the hoist. So just check your stickers, and they'll tell you the exact measurements because there, there are numbers. Like for this one, it's 127 inches. So what else do we need to know? Your overhead limit switch should always have that wired in. That yep, the electricians will be handling that when they come. Right now, we have it just wired in on an extension cord, basically. We grabbed a Tempted. bit of cable out of the high voltage lab. But uh, the electricians are going to come in, and they'll do a conduit drop and everything out of the ceiling. So. And you should periodically check that to make sure it's working. How do you test it? Just hit the, just when you're running the motor, take a broom, push it up. Just hit it with a push broom? Just hit it with a push broom. Okay. Otherwise, you, you'll be... Uh, Either buying yourself a new hood or a new top tier car, or buying somebody else, and that's not <laughs> a good thing. Okay. Um, another big issue: these lifts are designed to pick up with all four arms. Okay. You, you'll have some tire shops or 
the service centers that will throw one arm under a side because they want to change one tire. Oh, they just want to pick up one side of the car. Okay. And that that's a no no. That okay. Will. But it just puts all that strain on one side, and it'll actually. I've seen it bend the tops as far as where it's bolted together at the top here. Okay. And I've seen it take that bottom cable sheave and shoot it across the shop. Yeah, that would be bad. So that's another thing. So to we watch always out pick for. it up. Balance loads, always both sides. Even if you're just doing you know, front tires, you don't yep. pick up just the front, you pick up the back right, too. Right, right. And these, our arm restraints here, they do lock in after the first half inch of raising, the, yep. raising up. If they're not quite lined up or they haven't slid it, let's say you raise it up and one's engaged and one's not. Okay. I have these lubricated now, but Sometimes they freeze up. So every now and then just hit them with a shot of grease? It, hit them with something. Okay. And make sure they're engaging. Don't just count on it because okay. like, like we were talking about weight's so crucial. If, if it is off. And it'll, it can shift. It's kilted a little bit. And then if it shifts and kicks one of these arms out, that's, that's not good. This will stop And it's that. really easy to tell when, when you're lifting the car because these visually drop you know when it's when it's all the way down they sit up you know a good inch and a half right. but when they're engaged they're down like that right. so it's really easy to tell you just glance down and you can tell right um, other things make sure both of your locks are working you can always hear one click in but like you said it, when you're operating if you lift your car up you set it down if one of the locks is not engaged and you'll see that side you know actually drop Okay, you so you got to be careful of that when you're setting it down on the locks, make sure both are in. Right, and that's a good, you'll always know that both your locks are working if you always set it on the locks. Okay. So, that's another thing. Does that then, pretty much uh, cover it? Yeah, if, if you're going to install your own, make sure you drill all the way through the floor. <laughs> all the way through the floor? All the way through the floor. Okay. You ever want to move it or you ever have an anchor that goes bad? You can just hammer them you out can, the bottom. You can push it through the bottom, but it will not come out the top. So, That's a handy thing to know. So yeah, drill, the, drill those all the way through. You'd hate to have to move the lift just because of one anchor. <laughs> so. All right, so I want to thank you, sir, for coming. Thanks Eric for having and us. Steve from American Hoist Lube and Air, or was it American Air, Ho American Hoist Air and Lube? <laughs> That's right, just, all say, right. just say American, American Hoist. American Hoist, all right, there okay. you go. They're based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they came and installed our hoist. They did a great job. We had a ton of fun hanging out because these guys are just funny as a rubber crutch. It was a great time. So if you need a hoist in the Grand Rapids or Southwest Michigan area, call these guys. American Hoist, they're in the book, they're awesome, and they'll come and install your brand new rotary lift. And they carry other brands as well, but they're not as good as rotary. So. I want to thank you guys for coming. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, donate, and call your mom. We'll see you guys next time here at the Leonard Street Labs. Thank you. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.